In this step, we're going to be using NURBS again to create a fantasy looking scroll to be laid out across the table. So in order to set up for that, we'll first of all get the furniture out of the way. I'm going to then go into the front view for this, find my origin, there it is, and I'm going to need my curve tools again. So we're going to go to create curve tools and we'll do CV curve and I'll just show you how I'm going to put this together. So I'm going to start over here and I'm just going to do lots of clicks round in a circle like so, I'll get a nice spiral. Oh, mm, yeah, that'll work actually. Let's, if you put any points in that you don't want, you can hit backspace to get rid of them. So I wasn't a fan of some of those ones there. And then I want to just get down onto the sort of level area like that. You can if you choose to. If you want this to be perfectly flat, you can choose to press X when you click and that will snap it to grid points. So I'm just doing that now. So we're going to go over here. Yeah, I'll go about that far. And then I'm going to bring it up like that and just quickly get my spiral on. Okay. And that's going to create that. Not symmetrical, wasn't aiming for symmetry. Um, might look a little bit strange, we'll see. But that gives us our curve to start from. Now we need to go back into our perspective view. Find the curve. There it is. And we need to duplicate it. We need to have two sides to this. So it's going to represent kind of the top and bottom edges. So I'll duplicate it and we'll move it up to about there. That looks like a good distance. And that's going to create the information that Maya needs in order to do what's called a loft between these two curves. So I'll first make sure that I select them both. Then I'll go into surfaces and just simply click on loft. And what that then does is creates some geometry between those two curves. You can see that works out pretty nice. As I did with the candle holder, what I want to do now is just convert this to polygons. So that lives in modify, convert nerves to polygons, and then we're just gonna move that up there. Then I can get rid of the nerve surface and the curves that I used to construct the polygons. Get rid of that. I'll just drop that back at my origin for now. And what I want to do at this stage is quadrangulate this. So I want this to be back into quads. And I'm going to do that, like I did in the previous step, with retopologize. Because that's going to give me nice, evenly spaced out quads. And it should keep the shape as I've already got it. So we'll click on retopologize, see what we get. Yeah, and I think that looks pretty nice. The next thing I'm going to do, because I actually want a little bit more geometry on this, especially across here is I think I'm going to put some additional edge loops in, just in certain places. You'll see why in a second. So I'm going to go into my multi-cut tool for this, hold control so that it's going to let me put edge loops in, and I'm going to put edge loops in near some pre-existing ones. You can see I've made a mistake there because it's doing the retopologize, just like it did with the candlestick holder. So that means that I need to delete the history on this before moving on. So I'm just going to put it into object mode and then go to edit, delete by type and history. Now I can go back to my multi-cut tool and put some of these in. So either side of pre-existing edges, I'm going to put in some new ones. That should do it. And I will show you why I made that change. So if I just now go into vertex mode, I want to make this look a little bit tatty around the edges. So I'm just gonna bring in some edges. So I'll bring that one in there and then probably on the scrolly bits here as well, just to make it look a bit aged. We don't want this to be too perfect, do we? No siree. So let's just crud this up a bit. And you can spend as much time on this as you want, but we just don't want this to look too perfect. Perfect is bad. So let's go into object mode and see what we've got. Yeah. Now at this stage, I want to explain something to you. You might be being bothered by the fact that this side here is showing up as nice sort of gray as we would expect it to be but the other side is coming up as this awful black color this is Maya's way of showing us which is the back side of the face polygons are actually one-sided and if we were to import this into a game engine this area that's black actually wouldn't be rendered at all so Maya's kind of giving us a warning there are two solutions to that you can either extrude the shape and add some thickness to it so you get a front and back polygon I don't want to do that in this case the other solution 
is to render both sides of the polygon. So in order to do that, we're going to go into lighting and we're going to turn on two sided lighting. And that will now render both sides of this scroll as we would expect it to. And I think that's looking pretty nice. We threw that together quite quickly. Let's give it a name, scroll. And let's bring back our furniture and pop it on the table. So we're going to need to shrink it a little bit. It's a bit too big at the moment. And we need to just do our best to get it in place. So let's just go into the top view for this. So I'm going to put it here. I'm also going to rotate it a little bit because there's nothing worse than things looking too perfect. So we'll go for, yeah, let's drop it over here and put a bit of a rotation on it. And then we're going to go into this view here. And we need to be careful about this because we don't want this to clip through the table. We need it to be just above it. So there's actually going to be a little bit of air between it like that. Okay. That then I think is starting to come together pretty nicely. The last thing I'll do in this step then is I'm just going to add our new scroll to the furniture layer. So let's go add selected objects, which means that I can turn those all off. And that's going to get us ready for the last thing that we're going to add to our table together, which is going to be a book. So I will see you in the next step for that. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.